to look at interval of convergence, and then I'm going to spin off and do the next step. The next step is going to be to find the actual, we did the radius yesterday, we're going to do the actual intervals. So if you take this one here, you're going to use the ratio test, all terms positive. And then you're just going to take the limit, n approaches infinity, of n plus 1 times 5 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, over, and this is kind of the easy part, n times 5 to the n times x to the n. We're using the ratio test because if that limit is less than 1, it converges. Remember that? So we take the limit, n approaches infinity, of n plus 1 over n. Then I'm going to break this into 5 to the n times 5 over 5 to the n. And then I'm going to put this uh, x to the n times x to the 1 over x to the n. What cancels out? 5n's, x to the n. And what does... What does n plus 1 over n as n goes to infinity, what does that go to? Just to 1. So we're going to be left with 5x. All right? So then what you do is you say 5x is less than 1. So what's x going to be less than? 1 fifth. This 1 fifth has a name. It's the radius of convergence. And what we do with it is we make an interval from negative one-fifth to one-fifth. And the reason we do that is think of a number line. Zero's in the middle. The radius is one-fifth. So if it's forward one-fifth, we go back one-fifth. So in two dimensions, can you see how it's a radius of one-fifth? Now this is the new part. I think I did touch on this with this group, though is we're going to check the endpoints. And all you have to do for this, you could go a long way further than what I'm going to do, but we're going to check the x equal to negative one-fifth, and eventually we'll check x equal to one-fifth. Right, so you start by taking the original equation, and you go sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n 5 to the n, x is negative 1 fifth to the n. That's the same as n times negative 1 to the n times 5 over 5 to the n. What's 5 over 5 to the n? 1, right? And what's 1 to the infinity? 1. So this this whole thing here goes to 1. Zach, does that make sense how I put those two together? And then I pulled out the negative 1. So then this series, put a 0 in, you're going to get 0. Then you're going to put in a 1, but it's going to be negative. Then you're going to put in a 2, and then you're going to put in a 3, and you're going to put a 4. What do you think? Converge or diverge? Definitely diverge. Now we'll check the other point, x equal to one-fifth. Oh, by the way, if it diverges, we don't include negative one, so we put a parenthesis. If it did include it, we'd put a bracket. By the way, if the non-alternating, or the alternating diverges, not a lot of hope for the non-alternating, but let's see. So we have the sum, n goes from zero to infinity, n times 5 to the n over 1 fifth to the n, or over 5 to the n, what's this going to do? So that's just 1. So this is just going to be 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, what's that going to do? Divergent. Can you see how listing those is all you need to do? And so this will also not 
include. Now we get to this one C. This is this one is the same technique, but it's just more involved. So we're going to remember all terms positive because we're using the ratio test. And then you're going to take the limit and approaches infinity of the top is negative 1 to the n plus 1. By the way, we can just leave out that alternating part. Just ignore that because that's not going to affect my limit to infinity, we hope. So this will be x to the, oops, x to the 2 n plus 1 minus 1 over 2 n plus 1. Yeah. Oh, good, good point. Um, guess we can't really say that. I was trying to justify using the ratio test. Um, I'm not sure the answer to that. I know that we use the ratio test, but uh, you're right, we can't say all terms positive. Excellent. And then this is going to be times 2 n minus 1 in factorial over x to the 2n minus 1. That looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? No. So limit as n approaches infinity, we're going to get in the top, 2 times n is 2n. What's 2 times 1 minus 1? Come on, 2, plus, 2 minus 1, you're scaring me. There you go, plus 1. Whoo, yeah. Friday. So then this is going to be 2n minus 1 factorial over, now I'm going to put this one below, x to the 2n minus 1, and then I'm going to put this one, 2 times n is 2n, plus 2 minus 1. Good. Whew. All right. We're not too far gone. So now the limit, n approaches infinity, of which is bigger? x to the 2n plus 1 or x to the 2n minus 1? 2n plus 1. So I'm going to take the bottom, the one that's smaller of the two, x to the 2n minus 1, and I'm going to duplicate it, keep this one in the bottom, but I'm going to keep that. Now what's the difference between x to the 2n minus 1 and x to the 2n plus 1? What's the difference? x squared. So are these equivalent now? Are these equivalent? Yeah, because you have 2n minus 1 plus 2, 2n plus 1. But what's great is, is now what can you do with these two, x to the 2n minus 1s? They can cancel out. See how I did that? Okay, so then the next thing that's going to happen is which is the smaller of these two, 2n minus 1 factorial or 2n plus 1? Which is smaller? 2n minus 1. So we're going to keep the small one again. And then for the large one, we're going to take 2n plus 1 times what? 2n times? And why is that a good thing? Because they cancel. Okay. You're actually going to like this answer. Something really wonderful happens next. Limit as n approaches infinity of everything canceled here except for this x squared in the top and in the bottom 2n plus 1, 2n. And I'm curious if n goes to infinity, n goes to infinity x is constant. If n goes to infinity, what's this going to equal? Zero. Okay, now this is not this is not a disaster. This is a good thing. So this zero has to be less than one in order to be convergent. Is the zero less than one? Yes. It's convergent. So what if x was one? What if x was ten? What if x was one fourth? Does it matter what x is? Is this always going to be convergent? Yes. Always true. 
also always convergent. So how can you show that it's always convergent? What's the interval? All real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. What would the radius of convergence be? Infinity, yeah. <laughs> a little confusing, a little confusing, but kind of makes sense. So any value for x, that's, it's there, there is nothing you couldn't put in for x and have it not converge. Not for infinity, because we never quite get there, is the concept on that. Uh, what if this turned into infinity? Well, let's say this was in the top and the x squared was in the bottom, and you got infinity here. Is infinity ever less than 1? No. So then what would the radius of convergence be? Zero. There is none. So nothing works. That's kind of cool. <laughs>